Hello there guys, LazerBeast there, and welcome back to the Mythic Adventure. Now, this time we're going to try something different. This season is feeling pretty easy overall. So with this next dungeon, I've decided to add my own affix into the mix and play the key entirely in first person. If you enjoy staring at crotches, this is the video just for you. As I approach the dungeon, first person mode seemed like a great idea, for the most part. Once I got into the dungeon, the group had decided to go in Murloc mode, which was a nice idea. The only downside to this is because the Merlot model is quite small, it did make my overall height slightly lower, making things even harder to see because I was closer to the floor. Average gnome experience. But nevertheless, we pressed on. Once we got going, things were actually okay. Yes, it was a bit tricky to see where things were. And I did consider at this point if the group was starting to wonder why I was bouncing around like a man, with an entire swarm of wasps aggressively attacking the crevice between his two butt cheeks. The first big lieutenant type of mob was a little bit tricky. What I tend to do here normally, when I'm not being stupid, is just shift out of burr form when he casts his spell, and then pop straight back into burr form to instantly break the roots from myself. But I was too scared to do that in this situation, just in case I managed to stay outside of bear form for too long to take a smack to the face and get one shot. When we started to clear the trash around the first boss, these packs wanted to spread around farther than the cheeks of the man in the original Goatsy image. Don't google it. I did my best to kick the casts and group them up for maximum clear potential. Now at this point, if you did google Goatsy, go to r slash iBleach on reddit. Well just remember, I did try to warn you not to do it. Alright, so we'd made it to the first boss fight so far, so good. At this point in the dungeon though, I had definitely gotten up close and personal with more crotches than a gynecologist sees in an average working year. So now it was time to stare intently at the biggest wood of all. Luckily, he did have stage fright and there wasn't much to be seen, a mere twig, if you will. When the boss went into his intermission, I remained in position and dealt with his now hardened brittle stump, while the group did a great job at cradling the balls nicely into these pre-placed vines. You dirty minded people. It did become apparent that the boss had some nasty fungal infection plaguing his nether regions, as each time the balls were successfully managed, unchecked growths began to sprout. Now I relied on the nameplates of these pretty heavily to try and get aggro of them and see where they were, and stop them from passing gonorrhea to my teammates. Now, I also thought at this point it's probably going to be beneficial for me to get rid of this murloc buff to get a little bit taller so it's easier for me to see things. But getting rid of the buff proved much trickier than I thought. In the middle of combat with so many buffs arriving and disappearing, it was very hard to actually click on that as well as tank in first person mode. First try was unsuccessful, as was the second. But on the third attempt, I managed to get rid of the buff. Get the f out of here! However, it didn't actually make much difference, which just goes to show that it isn't your size that matters, it's the way that you min-max the gyration of your hips. Alright, so with that tree defeated, it was time to branch out into the next part of the dungeon. Now playing in first person was actually kind of nice, that is, until you entered combat when there were six angry enraged vegan orcs smashing your face in. These orcs that had been dipped in Mountain Dew also had little side chicks on the scene that tried to cast choking vines on us as well. We made sure to kick those as best we could, as the group and I weren't really into that BDSM kind of stuff, except if it's a Tuesday. Now these packs of big plant mobs were what I'd imagine it to look like if you woke up in a garden centre nightmare where the plants had come to life to get revenge on you for forgetting to water them for the 16th day in a row. Now the second boss, even though we got it down in the first try, it was quite a messy affair. And that was nothing to do with the weird love triangle that was going on between these three bosses, but just because of the mechanics. The pools on the floor were coloured green, against the green floor, with green spells and other green mechanics. There was enough green stuff around to warrant the attention of the local drug enforcement agency. It was definitely pretty hard to see here, and I had to keep on checking the floor for the circle around me when the boss does his ability Noxious Charge which is just slightly less annoying than its cousin ability, the Obnoxious Charge, which is what you should expect to find if you ever try to order a coffee from Starbucks. So with the second boss's messy fur over with, we entered the mage area, where these apparently wise individuals have gone and let gonorrhea run rampant in their ranks. And pants. We put on our hazmat suits and cleared out the trash, and then got up close and personal with the boss, hence the suit. At this point, the gonorrhea fumes infected our mage's PC, and he was disconnected from the game, leading to our first group wipe. We took a minute to collect our thoughts, and then went at it again. Now there's a lot of things to dodge in this fight, but we moved around the boss's room slicker than an oiled up sea lion on an ice rink. 
We got the job done, and then it was time to face the final and biggest crotch in this dungeon. Y'all knew who I'm talking about. I entered the boss's room and immediately took a sharp right to avoid being crop dusted. Now luckily for me, it appeared that Yalnu was in fact female, so I did not have to contend with a massive leafy appendage swinging from her undercarriage, which would have definitely hindered my view. We did our best to clean up the boss's attempts to call his side chicks to come support him in this battle, but the ones that he did summon were specced feral, which was good for us because nobody really knows how to play feral, so the damage was quite low. And then, with Yalnu defeated, the key was completed in time. Now, I'd love to say that playing in first person was an enjoyable experience, but I've got to be honest and say that it was about as fun as hearing the rhythmic, arthritic clapping of your 70-year-old neighbours making passionate love next door at 3am in the morning. Upon leaving the key, I popped back into the usual camera mode and breathed a sigh of relief. I just had one final promise to make to the group. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do leave it a like down below and consider subscribing to the channel for more World of Warcraft content. If you would like to see the entire dungeon run just to basically confirm that I did actually do it in first person for the whole thing, then just let me know and I will upload that as an unlisted video and leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching guys, take care and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.